Hi, um, I'm Glenn, and I'm actually a fifth year graduating this semester. Oh, right. That's, it's okay though. Um, so yeah, I did something a little bit different um, for my presentation. This is more just going to be a narrative of what I uh, went through in my journey in completing this course thread. So uh, let's go ahead and start with, yeah, let's get into the, the work that I did for this course thread. So in fall 2009, I took CS 160, Computer Science 160, that's User Interface Design and Development with John Canny and our GSI Anuj Tawari. And so this was the first upper division CS course that I took. And I was really excited about signing up for this one because I'd always been interested in um, user interface. And so uh, this course actually ended up being everything that I'd hoped it'd be, and it actually even managed to surprise me in a few ways. Uh, it was my first introduction to really this process of human-centered design, which is this uh, a, a set of methods that really comes down to first figuring out who your users are and gathering information about them, and gathering that information, turning that into a framework in which you can uh, design solutions around, and then you brainstorm uh, the different kinds of products or services that you might create to address this user's needs. And then from there, you build a prototype, and then you test this prototype with the users. And then after you test it, you evaluate it some more, and you'll reiterate by creating more prototypes and evaluating some more until you feel like, OK, now this product or service is ready to, uh, to it's done. It's ready, it's uh, ready to move on. And so that's uh, what uh, human-centered design is about. That's what I learned about human-centered design in this course. And um, I really enjoyed this course outside of that because I really felt the balance was really well done between uh, going to lecture and reading and actually discussing with your other students what you've learned in your lessons and then building an actual project in coding and practicing these different uh, methodologies. And so that takes us to our final project for the semester, which was uh, this iPhone application called Jam Session. It's a collaborative music making app so you can play together. And what we tried to do is we tried to take away the physical details of learning to play an instrument, such as fingering the chords on a guitar, and just let you uh, instead take a look at, or just play uh, chords and notes and start making music without having to learn how to play that instrument. And the awesome thing was we actually got to go to the Apple uh, campus in Cupertino and present to Apple engineers our final project. And um, so here we are talking, and a bunch of Apple people uh, gathering around our stuff. And so then that takes us to uh, spring 2010, which was uh, Mobile City Chronicles. And these guys are actually going to present some more stuff after us, uh, from what I hear. Uh, and this was with uh, James Holston and Greg Nehemiah. Hey, guys. Um, and so I took this course because I was interested in game. I wanted to explore my interests in game design. And I actually ended up getting a lot more than I bargained for because this course ended up being combined with this anthropology special uh, topics class. And so as you can tell by this title, Mobile City Chronicles Gaming with New Technology Detec Detection and Security. Uh, it's a lot of stuff. The first half was like, well, I wouldn't say first, but the game design half of it was about learning game design concepts, um, which of stuff like a, shoot, a bunch of, I had the names written up, they, I forgot to put them on this. Anyways, so we learned a bunch of game design concepts and we made a game design prototypes where um, we would play play test our games that we'd made with the different students. Um, it actually involved us running around uh, the city and uh, finding clues and, and stuff like that and putting together messages. And um, so that was the game design half. Where we're, we're practicing making games, learning methods, and it's just more of this uh, human-centered design kind of concept. And the second half was about the ethnography of cities and uh, surveillance slash detection. Uh, we started off learning the history of urban detectives, uh, the most notable example of which is like Sherlock Holmes. And, um, and then we also discussed uh, other topics uh, about surveillance, such as um, uh, so, uh, how surveillance leads to, uh, it ties into this concept of security and discipline in society, and, and that's how we use it. And so the fusing of these two concepts really occurred when we applied what we learned in the anthro side to game design. And um, what we ended up doing was we, we made these games where we used the city as a level and it was, we tried to leverage the technology that we had at our hands to, uh, to, make it about surveil to make surveillance an element of gameplay. And so our final project for uh, this course was City Fiction, which I did with Ann Beaver, who totally surprised me by being here today. Um, now I can't say anything mean about her. But um, so it's this collaborative storytelling uh, game where 
is played by two types of player. The first type is a chronicler who goes around the city and sets up these hot spots on the map and uh, sets a basic premise for a story. And then the second type of player is uh, the storytellers, and the storytellers have to go to these hotspots to unlock the chapter. And then together they write these chapters, and the chronicler ties it all together to make a coherent story. And that's how we, uh, that's the concept we made. We presented it at the end of the semester alongside the other projects from Computer Science 160, the user interface class, and it was uh, just a lot of fun. Uh, all right, and then that takes us to the next course that I did, which was, uh, Art 23 AC. Um, I had really enjoyed my experiences with Greg, and I was excited to know that he had a course that lets me knock out this AC requirement, and so I took it. Um, and this class is like absolutely brilliant. Uh, I felt like it paralleled uh, in a lot of ways with Mobile City Chronicles in that um, cyberspace. We form uh, cities in cyberspace, the different communities we have, and so um, a lot of the concept of surveillance they apply here as well. But there are also a lot of new topics that we discussed, uh, such as the idea of a digital identity, um, the um, cyborg augmentation, uh, online subcultures, uh, moral ambiguity and moral panics. And these are all these different sort of ideas that we discussed. And it really helped me understand um, the people that uh, I might be designing for uh, when I start doing software engineering um, on mobile apps. So here's uh, one of my works that I did for uh, R23AC. This one, this assignment was called Who Are You? where we had to interview um, a classmate and uh, create some sort of piece based on the uh, identity that we constructed from what they told us. And then um, here's some more stuff. We did uh, a cover of, a reimagining of the cover of Donna Haraway's uh, book, Simeon, Cyborgs, and Women based on our understandings from the reading. And so I, I did this with a partner, and this is just sort of what we came up with. And the other thing is a cell phone justice. This was a poster for a conference that Greg hosted on 10-10-10. He does one every year, and so 11-11-11 should be a, I'm really excited to see what he comes, uh, comes up with for that. But anyway, so this one was about how um, cell phones uh, allow us to um, allow new uh, sort of, shoot, how would I put this? Like. Uh, it changes the way that justice is carried out in a society. And there was some really uh, interesting talks there at that conference that I really enjoyed. All right, and uh, um, that brings us to this semester where I just finished um, Mechanical Engineering 98, which is uh, 198, which is the, the design decal, an introduction to human-centered design. And so I took this course, I stumbled upon it by accident, but um, I actually was really looking forward to it because it was a chance for me to uh, really practice the stuff that I had learned in my previous courses about design. And it ended up being exactly that, where the, the aspects of human-centered design that I learned in CS 160 stretched, which was only like a part of that course, stretched out for the entire semester, where from the very beginning, we're designing stuff. And then we are uh, we're taking on a number of different projects where we're just uh, getting these requirements, uh, making frameworks, and prototyping, and then evaluating. And so. Um, I uh, really enjoyed that, and for anyone that ends up being interested in this course, I highly recommend this course. Uh, here's some pictures. Like, like I said, from the very first day, we were just uh, building stuff. I like, think this is where we're making, like, uh, they asked us to come up with a new wallet, so we just started uh, building. Um, yeah, so that was a lot of fun. And then that brings me to plug uh, Berkeley Innovation, which is a club that I got involved with this semester. They're another uh, resource on campus for students that are interested in pursuing human-centered design. These uh, people are super talented uh, designers who um, are also super cool to hang out with. They, um, they're really ambitious, hardworking people. The, the thing about this club is that it's half social club, but also they take on very, uh, very big projects. Like they're, this semester, they're working with a design firm in San Francisco called Design Frog, and they're working on this thing with the National Park Service to help uh, increase fundraising for the parks. Um, another project that I was involved with for a bit before I had to drop out due to um, oh, being overscheduled this semester was something called the Index Design Challenge, where we were um, trying to design a way to help uh, third world countries, or developing countries, um, sorry, developing countries um, have better hand washing um, availability in schools because uh, diseases that can uh, be transmitted from inadequate hygiene really um, 
hurt the ability to, to for kids to learn. So um, those are the these are the resources that, or this is the path that I took towards uh, completing my course thread, and just wanted to share some of that with you guys and move on to some um, lessons learned, I guess. And so the first thing I want to say is um, it's all about communicating. De design is a conversation where um, users say, what users are saying is that we have this need, we need something, and the designers respond with, okay, well, um, here I'll make a product or a service. And so there's this conversation taking place, and one of the keys of being a good designer is understanding the context in which your problem is taking place in. And I equate this to being uh, present in a conversation. Because if you're not designing in that context, you're really designing for yourself. And it's sort of like being in a conversation where you're only talking about yourself and nothing's coming into you. And so that's why it's all about uh, communicating. And then second of all is um, make things that you love. Uh, I, I really believe that it's important for all of us to, to make something, be involved in creating something in this world because our connection to this world is the things that we make. If you're not really making anything, all you're doing is things are coming into you and you're not really giving anything back. There's no conversation there. So I really encourage everyone to uh, find something that they do, whether it's like knitting, uh, woodworking, uh, writing software, uh, just whatever there is out there, just start making something and get creative and be uh, connected to this world. And, um, and uh, I believe this is important because you know we all, we all make some, I guess in the end we all make something. We either create a product or we offer a service in what we do. And so um, getting better at this is all about these two things. Do, just make stuff, keep making stuff that you really enjoy making, and uh, be present in the, in the conversations. Thank you.